Well, a breakthrough in medical technology is heading into Australia for further development instead of the other way around. It's an artificial heart, which is about to get pumping on the Gold Coast after moving in from the US. The spinning heart has just one moving part and the lab at Griffith University is the perfect place to get ready for Aussie trials. Associate Professor Michael Simmons from Griffith joins us now. It's nice to see you, uh, Professor. Um, can you show us what the heart actually does, how it works, what it's made of? Yeah, it's amazing technology. Um, you just spoke around the, the uh, artificial heart. This is the artificial heart right here. It's actually been developed by a Brisbane-based inventor who's basically travelled right around the world to develop the technology behind this. And the really impressive thing is that you can see with this little mock circulation, we're just showing how it works today, it's actually got a pulse, which is really quite unique for these uh, developments. And secondly, it pumps to both the right and left side of the body. That means that both the lungs as well as the body get blood flow and it's really, really impressive technology. One of the most um, important parts of this is that it's got a single moving part. This little guy here is an impeller that Dr. Tim spent a lot of time developing and the really impressive thing is that it never actually touches any elements within this heart. So it's actually suspended in space by magnetic levitation. And this is really important because it means that the parts don't wear against each other like they would in a traditional medical device. Oh, wow, that is fascinating. This is amazing, and it's even more amazing. How, how is it that this company is bringing its operations to Australia? It's a really great story. As I just said, Dr. Timms took this uh, IP and went to Japan, went to Germany, went to the US, and really developed it over a, a really long time. We're lucky to get involved in this and in that the various levels of government have really put a lot of effort into this local environment here on the Gold Coast. Don't tell anyone, it's a secret that we're by the beach and doing pretty cool work. But we've got a medical university, uh, we've got a, a hospital across the road, and we've actually got a startup uh, precinct here where we can bring together really great entrepreneurs, engineers, scientists like ourselves, as well as medical professionals, and we get to rub shoulders and ultimately do really impressive uh, research together. And what we bring to the table is actually, we really nerd out on blood biophysics. So we basically like stressing blood. And the classic devices in this space were so uh, mechanically forceful that blood cells would break apart. The proteins that are really important for coagulation and, and wound healing would get damaged. Um, what we're doing with Bivacor particularly is trying to test their device and help them get it regulatory approved. Um, but importantly, we're, we're working with our skills to hopefully influence the next generation of medical devices so they're more blood friendly. This might seem like a, a bit of a silly question, um, but obviously more development needs to happen on that artificial heart. How small will it be once it is finally ready to implant into a chest? There are some future plans to try and downsize this for paediatric type models, but one of the really great parts of this artificial heart actually is this device, unlike other competing technologies, is actually a heart replacement. So rather than trying to supplement a diseased and failed heart, this actually is the size basically of a normal adult's heart. And so by doing that, it's really important because it means that the spaces where the blood flows in this artificial heart are much bigger than things like left ventricular assist devices. And that really great thing about that is that the stresses on the blood are much smaller. You know, basically what we know is that if you squeeze blood through a very small gap, the cells don't like it. So by having a, a native heart size, it means that the blood is less damaged when it passes through. Wow. And, 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 and how, how, um, how long do we, do we reckon that this artificial heart could last? I mean, is this something that could, that could last the rest of your life? That's hopefully the goal. Um, the unfortunate thing in heart failure is that the, a transplant is the cure. But obviously, young people that are donors that, that give away good quality hearts, uh, they don't necessarily want to do that too readily. And so these technologies are really life changing. You know, about 90, 95% of people with heart failure don't get a, a donor heart. And so having a medical device to fill that void is really important. And the really key thing about Bivacor's technology, as I said, is that this little impeller is basically um, held in space by magnets. And so not only does it rotate, it actually is trapped in a magnetic field. And so it never touches the chassis of the heart. And this is really important because you can imagine you get a pair of shoes, they wear down as you use them. This little impeller is basically wearless. It doesn't touch any physical components, only the blood. And so that means it will last in the, in the body for a lot longer than other technologies. And when, will we might, when we, might we see trials happening in patients then? 
I'm really excited. Actually, this young fellow here is uh, working with us quite strongly, and, and we're working towards getting this uh, regulatory approved. So the US FDA is the, the regulatory body that we're uh, basically submitting data to. And by basically testing out real blood uh, in this device and then actually taking it towards a, um, a more clinically relevant model, we'd hope in the next couple of years we might see a first in human trial. Oh, that is, it really is fascinating. It's, it's such amazing technology. Uh, you guys are awesome. I can't wait to see this. Thanks so much for showing it to us. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Keep saving lives, huh? Yeah. He mentioned wow. um, the scientist from Brisbane. Um, that was Daniel Timms, who actually came up with the idea, the prototype for the that, heart. Yeah. And his father had had a heart attack when he was still at university, and he made his uh, university dissertation on on creating this artificial heart. So mm. it was his his dad's bad health that put him on the path to save wow. possibly millions of lives. So quite amazing story. I got worried when I saw how big that thing was. Yeah, I was like, how's that going to fit? But even when he's holding it, it's like, this yeah. is the size of your real heart. You don't... I mean, you know it's in there. We just don't realise how yeah. big it is, huh? People, some people are bigger than others. Obviously, they are, because they're yeah. working on it. Um, now, that's superb.